John Wooden was born October 14, 1910, in Hall, Indiana. And like every young boy in Indiana, he wanted to play basketball. He was son to Hugh Joshua and Roxanna Wooden. He had three brothers named Marquise, Daniel, and William. He also had two sisters, but however, died at the young age. One who died was unnamed, another one died in infancy. In 1918, John and his family moved to a small farm in Cinturon in Indiana. They lived in a farmhouse with no electricity, and they were not very profitable as farmers. John played basketball with a rim made out of iron that his dad had made. And like every young boy in Indiana, he wanted to grow up and play basketball for his high school. While growing up, his role model was Fuzz Van Diver of the Franklin Wonder Five, a historic team in Indiana high school history from 1918 to 1922. He, in high school, John Wooden had become a star on court while becoming an excellent student. At the age of 14, John and his family moved again to Martinsville where he had led the high school to state finals three years in a row. The cause of the move was due to bank grumpsy in the father's business. In the year of 1928, John graduated high school and had attended Purdue University and was coached by the great Piggy Lambert. This is where he ended, earned his nickname of the Indiana Rubberman for his amazing drives with the ball. Piggy Lambert was known for his his creation of the fast break offense at Purdue, and was also the coach of John Wooden. In college, John was a member of the fraternity Beta Theta Pi. During World War II, he served in the U.S. Navy, where he nearly served for three years and left as a lieutenant. In his high school days, he met his future wife, Neely Riley, at a summer carnival in Martinsville. They went on to get married and started growing a family. In 1948, Wooden was forced to choose between the UCLA and Minnesota coaching job. But Minnesota and Wooden were not able to get together and call each other by the deadline, so Wooden took the UCLA job instead. Apparently, Minnesota called explaining that they were unable to call Wooden due to a snowstorm caused John to be late calling them because he could not get to a phone. But since John had already taken the UCLA job, he did not want to leave after already committing to them. Together, they had a son named James and a daughter named Nancy. He also had a routine before every single game on the bench before the game. He would give an okay sign to Neely when they were she was still alive. Even after her death, he still continued this ritual before every single game. Wooden was devoted to his wife, even 25 years after her death, before he passed away. He had a monthly ritual where he would visit her tombstone and write a love letter. After completing the letter, he placed it on the envelope and added it to the stack of similar letters that had accumulated over the years on a pillow that they had slept on during the, her life with them when they were married. He only stopped writing the letters in his last years due to his failing eyesight. When most people hear the name John Wooden, they think of this iconic coach who won 10 national championships in a 12-year span at UCLA. But something that most people don't know is that Wooden had a very successful career as a player as well. At times it seems like his legacy as a coach tends to overshadow his career as a player, a great career that shouldn't go unnoticed. Growing up, one of his role models was the fuzzy Vanderveer of the Franklin Wonder Five, a basketball team that dominated Indiana high school basketball from 1919 to 1922. He had ambitions to be even better than fuzzy and he'd become every bit of that. John was always the biggest, most athletic kid in his class, and that showed as he was able to make a huge Im impact on his varsity high school basketball team as a 14-year-old sophomore in 1926, leading Martinsville High School to the state title game. And that was just the beginning. He ended up leading his team to a three-straight title, three-straight 
state title games, winning one his junior season in 1927. He became a local celebrity in the town of Martinsville. The 5'11", 185-pound standout guard extended his playing career after enrolling to Purdue University to play for the legendary coach Piggy Lambert in 1928. Wooden played three years on the varsity team at Purdue, winning first-team All-American honors on all three of those years, more years than any player in college basketball history. His hustle and enthusiasm on the court earned him the nickname The Rubber Man for all the times he would dive on the court for loose balls. He averaged 12.1 points per game, led his team to his 17-1 record, was a National Player of the Year, and won a national championship during his senior campaign as a Boilermaker, solidifying himself a spot amongst the all-time greats in college basketball history. To this day, Wooden is still the only person to be inducted into the Hall of Fame both as a player and a coach. It's easy to get a big head when you have the most All-American honor in college basketball history, boast one of the best points per game average in college basketball, and also have a national championship under your belt. But Wooden's humble nature just wouldn't allow it. Going into his coaching career, everyone saw him as this prestigious three-time All-American basketball star from Purdue. But he just saw himself as John Wooden, no more superior than anybody else. That attitude played a big role in his success as a player and continued success as a coach. So often these days you see a sports icon who get who got a big head about themselves, walk around with the most expensive clothes and jewelries, and will be the first to tell you about their accomplishments. The interesting thing about Wooden was that he stayed true to himself. Even after his career at UCLA was all over and done with, Wooden would rarely take credit for his accomplishments for himself. He would credit the players, the assistants, and lastly more than anyone else his college coach and mentor, Piggy Lambert. Everything that Wooden would do as a coach was very similar to Coach Lambert would do. During Wooden's playing days at Purdue, Coach Lambert had a very unique style of offense at the time because most teams would try to slow the game down and walk the ball up the court. Sometimes for other teams at that time, the possessions would last up to two minutes. Lambert ran an up pace offense that would look for quick fast break points first, and then, if nothing was there, would set it up in the half court and run a high post offense. Wooden adopted that offensive philosophy while coaching at UCLA and fried with it. Wooden was a very devoted Christian. He considered his beliefs to be more important than basketball. This is a quote he said, I have always tried to make it clear that basketball is not the ultimate. It is of small importance to the comparison of the total life we live. If I were ever prosecuted for my religion, I truly hope there would be enough evidence to convict me. Wooden was also very well known for his teachings to his players and friends around him. For example, he taught them how to tie their shoes and put their socks on so that they did not get blisters on the very first day of practice. He is considered to be the greatest coach of all time in any sports and as well at any level. On the other hand, he is known as a great person and friend. John Wooden started his coaching career at Dayton High School in Kentucky, where he was also the athletic director and an English teacher. In his first season, the team went 6-11. and That was Wooden's first and only losing season for the rest of his coaching career. After two years at Dayton, Wooden accepted the head coaching job at South Bend Central High School in Indiana, where he was also athletic director, baseball coach, and an English teacher. After nine years of coaching at the South Bend Central High School team, and two at Dayton, Wooden had a record of 218 and 42. After returning from the Navy in 1946, Wooden accepted the head coaching job at Indiana State. When he was at Indiana State for two years, he turned down an invitation to the NAIB tournament because they did not allow black players to play in the tournament. After two years at Indiana State, Wooden accepted the head coaching job at UCLA. He had instant success, 
winning a conference championship in his first year. In the previous 18 years, UCLA had only won two. Also in Wooden's first year, the team finished 22-7, and a record for wins since the team was created in 1919. In Wooden's second season, he surpassed his previous win total and finished the season with 24 wins. Even after all of his initial success, Wooden was unhappy in California and wanted to return to Indiana to coach Purdue.
Although he wanted to leave, members of the UCLA athletic department reminded him that he had promised to coach the team for at least three years. Because of the football team paying athletes, UCLA was put under probation, which led to a drought in the basketball program. When the probation was lifted in 1962, the team immediately went back to its successful ways. In 1964, the final piece of the puzzle was added, the zone defense. It dramatically increased scoring, and John Wooden's Bruins went 30-0 and went on to win the national championship over the Duke Blue Devils. After winning the championship in 1964, the team repeated as champions. After missing out on the championship for two seasons, the team came back to win six straight national titles. In that time, they won on an 88-game win streak. From 1967 to 1975, the team only missed the championship game one time, giving John Wooden 10 championships. That's more than not only any college basketball coach, but program. After the 1975 national championship, John Wooden retired, finishing with a record of 664 and 162, including 10 national championships and 21 conference titles, 19 of them at UCLA.